only constant is change. That's true about life, and it's true about the climate. This is Patrick Moore giving a presentation for something called Prager University about climate change. I don't know much about Prager University, but judging from its promo, I'm sure it's a respectable academic institute. It's called Prager U, a totally new concept in education. It's simple and it works. It has dignified professors who look as though they're speaking quite knowledgeably about weighty subjects. So I won't bother looking at it in any detail. I'll move straight on to Patrick Moore's talk on climate change. Sorry, what? Run that by me again? Or you have an obligation to me, God. And what is that obligation? That you live by the following nine commandments. No, wait. I've changed my mind. I do so want to take a quick look at Prager University. Oh, please, continue, Professor. The one thing God declares is that he took the children of Israel out of slavery and into freedom. That's how much God hates slavery and how important God considers freedom. The founders of America based their entire view of America on this belief. They did? Now, there are some moments in time where I'm so sure that everyone's thinking exactly the same thing that I'm thinking that to spell it out would be pointless. There must be only six people watching this video who don't know what we're all thinking, and they're all graduates of Prager University. So if you haven't already guessed, there's something you need to know about Prager University. It's not a university. Prager U is a political organisation founded by Dennis Prager, a conservative talk radio host. It makes five-minute videos on everything from economics to science, sort of, to religion, including old favourites like I am the Lord your God and if there's no God, murder isn't wrong. Patrick Moore, who you may remember from the weed killer incident... Wait, no, we don't talk about the weed killer incident. Anyway, Patrick Moore has done a number of videos for PragerU, including this one on climate change. Here again is his main argument. Only constant is change. That's true about life, and it's true about the climate. The climate is always changing, it always has, and it always will. If this sounds familiar, it's because, like nearly all of Moore's arguments, it comes straight off the blogosphere. Climate change is a natural phenomenon, it's always been, but it always will be. The climate has always been changing. There has never been a time when the climate has not changed. But that's like claiming bacteria can't cause epidemics because there have always been epidemics. Or plate tectonics can't cause earthquakes because there have always been earthquakes. How does the fact that the climate's always changed preclude carbon dioxide as being the cause of that change? Unwittingly, by trying to show that CO2 and climate can't possibly be linked, Moore gives us some good examples of that very link. The the evidence is actually against the hypothesis that we're causing the warming, because there's been warming and cooling cycles all through the history of life, and some of them are longer than others, like the last ice age before this one was 300 million years ago. Indeed it was. And studies show that the cause of the last ice age 300 million years ago was a drop in CO2 concentration as carbon dioxide was weathered out of the atmosphere to form limestones and absorbed and buried by forests to form coal. Moore doesn't present any evidence that the studies are flawed. He simply doesn't mention them. And then it was warm for nearly 300 million years. Yes, it became warm again when huge quantities of CO2 were pumped into the atmosphere by two flood basalt events called the Siberian Traps and the Central Atlantic Magmatic Province. And since higher levels of carbon dioxide cause warming, the Earth got warmer. It really isn't much of a paradox to people who study this. It fits perfectly well with the role of CO2 as the main driver of long-term climate. So Moore's simple observation that it got colder and then it got warmer is perfectly compatible with the scientific conclusion that it got colder because CO2 levels fell and it got warmer because CO2 levels rose. He's got one more example, which I'm sure will also be compatible, but let's hear it anyway. Before it got cold again like it is now. And as you can guess, the cooling trend coincided with a fall in CO2 concentration as carbon dioxide was weathered out of the atmosphere and deposited as calcium carbonate in limestone. 
So Moore can give as many examples as he likes of changing climate, but none of that is incompatible with the conclusion of researchers that these changes were caused by carbon dioxide. Interestingly, Moore doesn't even try to rebut the mountain of research that shows CO2 is the cause of these changes in climate. He doesn't even refer to it. So we can cross that argument off the list. Next, we come to the weed killer incident. Oh no, sorry, I forgot. We must never mention the weed killer incident. So next we come to Moore's claim that there are other reasons why the Earth might be warming. There are many more factors in play than simply the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere. Factors such as the shape and size of the Earth's elliptical orbit around the Sun, activity from the Sun, and the amount of wobble or tilt in the Earth's axis, among many others. We'll come to fluctuations in the Sun in a minute. But is Moore really saying that the warming we're experiencing is due to changes in the Earth's tilt and orbit? If he is, Well, that's a very easy claim to demolish. The Earth's tilt and orbit are well understood and very predictable. So predictable that they trigger glacial and interglacial periods with clockwork regularity. Right now, these factors are giving us a fairly benign climate, and we're not expecting to begin our descent into the next glaciation for another 16,000 to 20,000 years. So no one can seriously claim that orbital shift is a factor in warming over the last 40 years, because that would require some sort of divine intervention, and astronomers and geophysicists would have noticed. So let's get back to Moore's other factor in climate change. Activity from the sun. Yes, of course, the sun's a factor in climate change. Put simply, when solar irradiance rises, it puts upward pressure on temperature. When solar irradiance falls, it puts downward pressure on temperature. Does anyone seriously disagree? So, since solar irradiance has been steady and then falling over the last 40 years, that should have been putting downward pressure on global temperatures, right? But global temperatures have been rising. It's the sun, stupid. No, clearly it's not. It's more accurate to say it can't possibly be the sun, stupid, unless you think that turning down a heater would cause a room to get warmer. So something else is causing record warming. Why does Moore think it can't possibly be carbon dioxide? So then what about carbon dioxide, the great villain of the global warming alarmists? Where does that fit into this picture? Not as neatly as you might think. Temperatures and carbon dioxide levels do not show a strong correlation. In fact, over very long time spans, periods of hundreds of millions of years, they are often completely out of sync with one another. Here you have a complete reversal of the idea that CO2 causes warming, where they are at exact opposites with each other. And in fact, most of the time, they're pretty much out of sync. And it shows very clearly that there's no lockstep correlation between CO2 and global temperature. Anyone who's watched my videos will know that this one also comes from a blog by a coal mining engineer, Monty Hebe. Hebe simply stuck two graphs together. One is a temperature sketch by Scottese in 1999, which Scottese derived from a book by Frakes in 1992. And Hebe got the CO2 data from a study called GeoCarb3, published in 2001 by Berner et al. Now, let's be a teeny bit sceptical and check the sources of both graphs. Frakes, the author of the temperature data, says the warming periods are due to relatively high levels of CO2. Conversely, cooler periods are due to lower levels of CO2. Berner, writing eight years later, says that over the long term, there's a correlation between CO2 and temperature. Let's leave aside the question of whether Moore actually read their studies. The nub of the issue is why Moore concludes that there's no correlation when the authors, and every other researcher in this field, says there is a correlation. Just looking at these graphs would suggest that Moore is right. So is there something the researchers know that Moore isn't telling us? It turns out, yes, there is. Like all the bloggers he copied from, Moore completely omitted the warming effect of the sun. Sorry if you've heard this before, but the sun has been growing steadily hotter over time, so there's no better a correlation between the sun and global temperature over the last 500 million years than there is between CO2 and global temperature. 
But no one would be daft enough to conclude from this obvious lack of correlation that the sun has no effect on temperature. It's a combination of solar forcing and carbon dioxide forcing that gives us a good correlation with global temperature. Correlation doesn't necessarily mean causation, of course, but it is consistent with the overwhelming body of evidence that CO2 is a major driver of climate. And it completely demolishes Moore's claim that there's no correlation to begin with. Ironically, Moore can only support this non-correlation claim by completely leaving out the effect of the sun, something that he's been so insistent on calling a big factor in climate change. It's the sun, stupid. If only Moore had recognised and included the growing output of the sun in his model, he would have been able to answer his own question about past climate very easily. Here there was an ice age when CO2 was at least 10 times higher than it is today. So why was there an ice age when CO2 was 10 times higher than today? Because, as we've seen, the sun was much, much weaker than today. Why did we come out of that ice age? Because CO2 levels rose. The last internet myth Moore presents at public speaking events is the old one about climate change stopped 15 or 18 or 19 or, in Moore's case, 20 years ago. Contrary to media headlines, the trend over the past couple of decades has been essentially flat. No, it hasn't. All the temperature measurements show, and all the major climatological institutes in the world agree, that temperatures have been rising for 40 years, including the last 20 simply repeating a shop-worn blogosphere myth won't make it magically come true. That's pretty much all of Patrick Moore's claims against carbon dioxide debunked. If you thought, well, that was easy, yes, it was. Because, as I always say, you don't need to be a genius to check facts. Just have a bit of scepticism and the ability to look things up. In Moore's case, it's even easier, because since nearly all his claims are copied off the internet, I've already debunked them in previous videos. Moore is never exposed to criticism like this because he always plays to a friendly crowd. It's my pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Patrick Moore. He's learnt from one bad experience that it's not a good idea to be interviewed by people who might challenge his claims. It was... I know, I, I shouldn't mention it, but... OK, it was the weed killer incident. <laughs> Maybe I'll... No, I can't. All right, you win. I'll tell you about the weed killer incident. First, you have to understand the background. Patrick Moore doesn't actually do any scientific research or publish any scientific papers. He makes a living as a PR consultant. He founded a PR company 26 years ago called Green Spirit Enterprises, now called Green Spirit Strategies Limited. And he's made a very good living over the last three decades lobbying on behalf of clients who get a bad rap from environmentalists, like fossil fuel companies. And, you know, for me, the bottom line is the fact that every square inch of the oil sands development will eventually be reclaimed. It's I'm going to talk about energy in general for a bit here, because the oil sands and oil has to be contexted in the larger energy picture. Pulp and paper companies. We can make sure that the clearing of land is done legally and the cutting of trees is done legally. The giant paper company Boise Cascade is just as much in the business of planting trees as it is in harvesting them. Nuclear power companies. They need to be put in a safe place and that's what Energy Solutions is doing. They're doing a good job for all of us. And of course he gets hired by political organizations to give speeches on climate change. But sometimes Moore's enthusiasm for promoting junk science gets the better of him, like when he claimed that a weed killer called glyphosate is so safe that you can drink it. I do not believe that glyphosate in Argentina is causing increases in cancer. You can drink a whole quart of it and it won't hurt you. It's, yeah, uh, it, you want to drink some? We have some here. I'd be happy to, actually. But you, not, not really, but... Not really? I know it wouldn't hurt I mean, me. If, if, if you say so, I have some glyphosate... No, no, I'm not stupid. Ah, OK, so you... you, you no, but I know... So that, it's dangerous, I right? Know, I, no, people try to commit suicide no, with no, it and no, fail no, fairly regularly. Tell the truth. It's, it's not dangerous, dangerous to humans. No, it's no. not. So you're ready to drink one glass of no, glyphosate? No, I'm not an idiot. Moore walked out of that interview, and as far as I know, he's never been questioned by a sceptical interviewer since then. The fact that Moore gets paid to make a lot of these claims doesn't matter. 
I only mention it because Moore uses that argument himself, claiming that scientific institutes like NASA reach their conclusions in exchange for funding. And the scientists and science institutions who are bringing in billions of dollars for this research. What would be the motivation for NASA, NASA to do that? If there's one if there point, goals one point eight billion dollars in public funding, that's the motivation. But in fact, NASA's funding is being threatened because it continues to endorse the conclusion that CO2 is affecting global temperature, a conclusion that runs counter to the beliefs of politicians on the committee that sets NASA's budget. The core function of NASA is to explore space. And, and you know that I am concerned that NASA, in the current environment, has l lost its full focus on that core mission. And I so ironically, it's not NASA that gets paid according to its conclusions, but more. The oil sands companies didn't pay him to conclude that burning fossil fuels is bad for the environment. And if he tried to book himself as a speaker explaining the conclusions of climate research, he'd very quickly find himself out of a job. That's not what PragerU or the Heartland Institute want to hear. But like I say, it's not important that Moore's making money by spreading this message. He's welcome to make a buck any way he can. What matters is that his claims are factually incorrect. What matters is that he's chosen to omit, either through ignorance or by design, crucial information that supports the peer-reviewed science rather than the blogs. Let me end by saying there's one thing I do agree with Patrick Moore on. When I started this series on climate change, I said I dislike the word denier, and I never use it. I'm glad to see that Patrick Moore agrees with me. It's mean-spirited because to call someone a climate change denier is to intentionally link them to people who deny the Holocaust. Well done, Patrick. Nice to see that you're taking a principled stand and not counting... The deniers of naturally caused climate change. Don't! Wait, before you go, if you want to support this channel, don't send money to me. I'd only spend it on chocolate eclairs and drambui. Send the money to a charity I support. The donations link is in the video description. You're just one click away from encouraging me to keep these videos coming, and you'll be improving the health and welfare of people and forests at the same time. Tell them I sent you. So far, the charity has received over $10,000 from my subscribers. Many thanks.